Hey guys, John here. Today's pigments patch is called Keys of Glass, and this one is kind of Keys of Glass, but it sounds metallic-y and glassy, and yeah, I think the name kind of uh, speaks for it, so here we go, Keys of Glass. All right, so let's get into this here. So for the synth side, we're going to be using engine one sample, engine two wavetable, and then the utility engine for the first noise oscillator here. We're going to be using one filter for the effects. We're going to be using the all of bank A and then two of bank B. So let's turn the effects off here. Let's go to our synth, turn off utility one, engine two, and let's look at number engine sample number one. So this one is going to be Emulse, Emulse Wave, whatever that really means. So it's going to be a Pigments 3 Emulse Wave for that sample here. And the course tuning is going to be at zero. The voice is 2, detune 1.13% and stereo all the way to the top, so 100%. And then this one is getting sent to filter number one, and it sounds like this. Now, something that I did make sure to do, so as I mentioned before in a previous video, how when you play these samples, it's a certain fixed time, right? So if you play it and you have other stuff going, your sample's gonna be gone and other stuff could be going. So you kinda wanna think for that, right? Because we have also have a wavetable in here and a sample. So based on this envelope here, this attack is one millisecond, decay 1.78 seconds, zero sustain, and then the release is 1.24 seconds, decay curve 2.08, and the attack curve is zero. So with that being said, if you notice, the sound, the envelope will be gone before this sample actually ends. So now it's ending and the sample's still going. So as we play a note, we, we know that we're not going to lose the sample if we keep holding down the note. So that's kind of just a concept that I thought I would mention before we move on here. Next up, we have the engine number two wavetable. So let's take a look at that over here. So this one is basically going to be the basic waveforms here on the sign. But if we click on this button here, we can see there's some weird voodoo happening over here. And really, that's going to be this wave folding here at 0 0.960. And the shape is going to be the first one, the sign here. And it kind of just gives it a little bit of a different timbre to it. It's not just a sine wave. And the course tuning is gonna be down one octave because this is kind of carrying the low soft end while the top is kind of carrying the, uh, the glassy stuff. Because that almost seemed a little bit too naked, you know what I'm saying? Gotta put some clothes on. This one's going to filter number two, which there's really nothing happening here. I did have this one on multi-mode. But I mean, it's kind of really irrelevant. You can have it on or off, it doesn't really matter because this sound itself, you don't really need to filter too much out of it. It kind of just is what it is. So that's why that's bypassed. You might think, oh, why is it going to number two and it's bypassed? Why is that happening? A reason for that is also, if we go look over here to our filter routing, we'll see that's independent. So I wanted to process this one separately, which we're gonna see in the separate uh, FX here in just a second here. So we don't really need a filter is what I'm saying. Next up, we have the utility engine. We turn this on. This is going to be Electro Firefly under the hardware Electro Firefly. And let's turn this off here. So it's just a little bit of noise here. And we can see there's an envelope on this as well, right? So what this is doing is kind of just adding a little bit extra texture to that pluckiness of that, uh, of that key. So those together. It's a subtle little difference here, but it almost makes it a little bit more realistic if someone's actually playing it, right? And that same envelope, this is envelope number two, let's take a look at that over here, this guy down here, is also going to be on this filter over here, which kind of is a good segue to that. So envelope number two, as we can see here, is going to be modulated by 0 0.50, kind of just popping open that, uh, that volume knob once we hit a note, and it's gone pretty quick. So this envelope amount, the attack is 1 millisecond, decay 300 milliseconds, zero sustain, and release 100 milliseconds, decay curve, negative 4, attack curve, zero. So this same envelope is also going to be modulating this cutoff over here. So by default, this knob is at 249 hertz, and the envelope amount is going to be 0.25. There's also going to be a macro number one on it, which is tone. So we're going to get to that once we uh, wrap up the FX. We're going to go over these uh, macros here. The resonance is going to be at 0.168, and it's a low pass 24 for the Matrix 12 filter. 
So let's turn all these on here and let's take a look at the effects here. So this is our basic dry sound. Now moving to the effects bank here, let's turn these on. Let's turn off B right now. So basically what's happening here is for this first effect here, it's getting hit first by an EQ. So we're kind of carving out some of that low end and some of this pointy, really harshness over here. So for this first one over here, we are targeting 112 Hertz and we're bringing it down by negative 3.87 dB. So let's take off engine number two because that could be distracting because we're really only processing the first one right over here. Next up, we have a delay, and this is going to be timed at 1 over 8 dotted note. The fine is at 0, feedback 0 0.140, stereo spread 0.144, high pass 232 hertz, low pass 20k. And you might be wondering, because normally with delays, we kind of like to crank down this low pass right over here. But for this, I kind of like that texture, that really clear, almost glassy texture that kind of bounces, especially once you feed it with two delays. So this dry wet's gonna be at zero, but it is modulated by macro number two at 0.27 right over here, which we're gonna talk about just a little bit. Then it goes to this next delay here, and this one is gonna be one over four. The fine zero feedback 0.352, stereo spread 0.122, high pass 156, and the low pass 20K. See what I'm talking about? That kind of just that really like clear, crisp delays after you hit the notes. Very cool. So this modulation amount is 0.27 for macro number two. Moving on from there, we go into FX Bank B, and now this is where we want to bring in the second engine over here. So this first one over here is getting hit by a chorus, and it's going to be on the reverb-like preset, which I think is really cool, but at a really low amount, maybe 23% right over here, and this is going to be tied to macro number three, which conveniently says chorus. And then last but not least, it gets hit with a shimmer reverb. The pitch shift is 12, so one octave up. The feedback is 0.364, size 50%, modulation 1, high pass 200, low pass 7K, ducking 0.188, and stereo width 0.974. The dry wet is going to be a zero for the knob, but it's modulated by number 4 at 0.22, as it conveniently says, reverb. So now let's get into our macros here. So we talked about our, actually, let's go for uh, for these back. Let's go a little backwards. It's going to be a little interesting, but we have the reverb that we just talked about, right? So this knob just literally controls the reverb. As we bring this down, we can see this little blue dot go all the way to the bottom. So now there's going to be no reverb on it. Now there is. And same with the chorus. So by default, it's going to come a little bit low, but there is a lot of wiggle room that you can move this with if you'd like to. Totally up to you. Then we have our delays here, right? Because we have two of these delays, right? We have the first one that's the dotted note, and then the second one that's a quarter note right over here. So both of these dry wets are going to be controlled by this one delay knob over here. As we turn this to the left, we can see both of those are down, and then all the way to the right, both of those are up. But they are 0.27 and 0.27. So it is the same value, but both of these modules are controlled by this single knob over here. Now let's get into tone. So that's over here on the synth section. So we click on number one tone and we see it's a filter one cutoff. So right over here. So I could have put cutoff, but it didn't necessarily make as much sense for this patch, right? So as we move this tone here, we can kind of darken those keys because if you put it really high up, it can be very piercing. I'm not going to go too far. Don't, don't want to hurt your ears, but just know that you can go much further than this comes by default if you want a lot more of that presence. But if it's too much, you can always back that down to maybe something a little bit more comfortable, a little more round, as they say. So yeah, that was Keys of Glass. Hopefully you learned something. If you would like to get this patch for free, it's in the video description below. You just got to click the link and download it, install it, and then play it, and it can be yours for free. Pretty awesome. So like I said, hopefully you learned something, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.